Hi, thank you. Yes, well, you all know recently Linux was announced on Chrome OS. So we actually, we are working on Chrome OS for several years now with our company and really only Chrome OS devices. We really, really like it. And we did a lot of development on it as well. Um, but usually we're using IDEs on the web, C9, something, some, um, and it worked pretty well for us. Actually, the Google Apps Script environment was always on the web, so, and we did a lot of work there too. But for a few weeks ago, there was this uh, Linux environment and we we tried it out and actually it's pretty nice to do uh, local development on Chrome OS and it works even better than I thought. So now, now that it's in, in stable channel for, for lots of Chromebooks already, I would think it's nice to just pick a new Chromebook and show you guys how to get to install VS Code, uh, install Clasp, install something to have some Google Apps script code highlighting that's always easy in development, and just install Linux and see the whole process and how, I think I'll also want to mention how well it's made on Chrome OS. It's just, it feels polished and I, I really like it. So I have this Chromebook, it's just simple Acer. For it, it's, it's pretty new, it's nothing on there, so I hope everything goes <laughs> as planned. Um, so you can follow the screen, it's, it's on full screen now, isn't it? Yep. Okay. So, well, Chrome, in, in this, in, you have, first you have to make sure you're on the latest uh, version. I think it's six, 90, 69. Um, and just go to your settings. And you will find, let me scroll down. Oh, just a second. Here it says Linux and beta. So the first thing you really want to do is to turn it on and install it and just wait a bit. So usually this goes pretty fast. I'm not sure how fast it goes in this device. But in between I can probably tell some stuff. So it's actually installing a sort of Debian um, version of um, uh, Linux. So a lot of packages and a lot of software is really available on the internet. And I will show you also in a second how you install this stuff without using the command line, because lots of people just don't like it. And you really don't need it for, for installing applications. That's why I said that's what I like about it being so polished. There we go. And when it's installed, you'll get a Linux shell. So there we are. So now it's installed. And actually, it's also booted up now. And I always see it when I go to the files uh, application. Let's go here. Files. I, I can close the shell now. We don't need it. So this is actually play files is for Android. Mm -hmm. And Linux files is my Linux files. But there are no files in there. <clears throat> so the first thing that we actually want to do is um, install Visual Studio. I'm doing Visual Studio installing first. Let's copy the code. Um, because it, it also gives me a shell to work in. So what I, what I do is I, I download this DB Ubuntu file. So those not familiar with VS Code, um, it's open source and it's free, so there's no yep. cost. I think it's generally, generally people like it, <laughs> as far as I know. It seems to be the editor of choice right now, as far as I've yep. picked up off the wire. So the file is here in downloads. What I do is I put it on, just drag it to Linux files. And what I can do now is just install it or just double click it now. Mm -hmm. And it says install the application. Okay, fine. Installation started, and it, you'll see that it's nicely bringing up the installation of the application. Good. Here it says it says app is available in the terminal, but like VS Code also has an option that it installs itself on the launcher. So you really only have to go here. You see Visual Studio Code is there with a nice icon. Click it. Now let's open a folder. Okay. So now actually we are in a project. Can you see this way? I should make it full screen. Maybe it's better. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's an empty folder actually. So now we're ready to to install Clasp, and we need to install some other stuff. And you can open a console in VS Code by by just pushing pushing Control Escape. Uh, control tilde. I'm sorry. That's a uh, escape. And it opens up the terminal screen here, so you can actually run your commands. And to run Clasp, we need Node.js, and I think it's not installed. No, it's not installed uh, by default. Just go to the site. I will share these links with you. Yeah, yeah. NVM is a good uh, package. To get the Node version manager. I use it all the time. Um, especially for detecting which version of NPM you're using. Yeah. So actually, how to install it is it's a matter of copy paste. So actually, I'm going actually use Control Shift V to paste something in here. Uh, not note install, but NPM. <laughs> yep. Now we need to do these commands first. Otherwise, we have to restart the terminal. This. this is just that the NVM command is working the first time. NVM install, and just you can say install eight. It will install node for you. Yeah, it's just <laughs> Casido and PMI Google Clasp install it globally. So. Yeah. So, go. We don't need sudo here. Yeah, while we wait, um, so CLASP is, stands for Command Line App Script Projects. It's the App Script command line tool that allows you to uh, create, manage, write, and deploy app scripts um, using your terminal straight from the command line rather than using script.google.com. Um, it was released earlier this year. And um, it's an open source tool available uh, on GitHub uh, under Google. And I'm the primary maintainer. And it's been evolving uh, throughout the months. Actually, to get started, I, I think it was class plugin we had. Yep. Um, I'm not, not sure, because usually this works with uh, um, with a local host, because it runs on the same machine. But with Clasp on Chrome OS, it doesn't, I think. See? Um, OK. So uh, you can log in with uh, no local host? Yeah. I know, but you should I do it. Just... Um, I think I open that ticket. I new <laughs> terminal and do control. And then it's OK, too. Uh, or you can do that. <laughs> Actually, so I'm, I'm going to this. And class just knows that I'm logged in out on the other terminal. So but it, you can use no local host. But it's it's strange that, it, that it's not working on Chrome OS, because uh, other, like G Cloud and stuff like that, you can authenticate this way as well. I think it's the port number or something like that. The, the, to get to get a very small file, I think it's class uh, emit. Uh, class create. Okay, create. Yeah. Because the last thing I just want want to show you is to to show how you can get this app script out complete into VS Code, and after that, I think it's best that you just take over with your version, and everyone has seen how to install Clasp. So we give the script yeah. the title, my script. Uh, so to use Clasp. You should enable the app script API. And it's in script.google.com. And you're, it is actually says installing in Dutch, but it's settings. <laughs> this is probably worth highlighting that a lot of this stuff is all you just need to do once. And that's it. You've got VS yeah. Code installed, you've got Clasp installed. You can start scripting to your heart's content. And you see that, that Clasp is creating some files here. So now we can actually uh, create a new file like code GS.
you actually see that now it's not it's not showing anything like you are used to on the on the script interface so you need to download the definitions for Google Apps Script. You can find them on NPM, there's a package for that. Just, you actually get pretty quickly used to using NPM to install stuff. If you were never done that before. So what, what we can do now to make this work is actually create a new file uh, and just just give it a name, apps script, a JS. And the only thing we put in here is import Google apps script to make VS Code know that you want to use it. Save it. And now, if you use Drive app, it says your it has your methods. Create file, get access, all the stuff you're used to. It's all very, there. That's very nice. So you can actually start coding app scripts like you are used to in the sites app. It's still there. Yeah. So it's it's all, it's, it's well maintained, I guess. The issue now is, the last thing I want to say is that if you upload this code to Google App Script, it will add your uh, app script to JS file. You actually don't want it. So there is, you can add a new file again, and you can call it class ignore, and just add app script the JS in there, and then class pull not upload it with it, and that's the single part you have to do. So if you have this set of files for each project, you copy them in there, and then you can uh, start playing and scripting. Achieved a lot there, but you, you're still you're out with the the, the app script IDE, so you, I, 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 and so you're you, you know you don't have access um, to the debugger. But as you've been developing in this way for a while, um, did, do you, do you miss the debugger or have you got a workflow for that? I think the main the main advantage of the app script interface is actually the play button for functions. Yeah. And if you write small scripts, then it's really advantage. But as soon as you are starting to write some more complicated code, then it's very nice to just put it here, start here, and and do the, the fine tuning actually in app script. Just have them both open, code here, uh, upload stuff, go to app script, refresh the page, and do your testing. Actually, it it works for bigger files. For small files, the, the interface of app script just does what yeah. it needs to do. I think we are already used to working there, but it definitely brings some some new possibilities now and creating more extensive scripts and especially if you're building some uh, client side stuff as well, of course, HTML uh, and some client side JavaScript where VS Code definitely outshines the, the Google Apps Script Editor by any means. Uh, we got a question from Alexander. Um... He's saying, I'm not sure that importing types is necessary uh, via VS Code yeah. itself. So, uh, yeah, I, I might chime in. Um, so I don't think that you need to import the types, or maybe you need to import them once on the beginning of your file. But I think the editor should, uh, once you do that, it loads the types, and it should automatically autocomplete. Um, so I don't think creating a, a separate file might, might not be necessary. <laughs>